This is our story, the story of Islam. What was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu calling for? The Quran comes to capture the message of Rasulullah. وَعَبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah alone and don't associate no one with Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Show kindness to the parents. وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى The relatives. وَالْيَتَامَى The orphans. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ The poor. وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ The near and the distant neighbors. وَالْصَاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ The close friend. وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ The needy travelers. وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ And anybody that is under your care or in your possessions. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا For Allah does not like those who are arrogant, boastful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also in the Qur'an, we have the beautiful commandments of Allah. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشِ What did Allah, what did the Qur'an make forbidden? The Qur'an comes to answer. My Lord has made forbidden the fawahish, the open and the secret indecency. مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمِ and the sinfulness وَالْبَغِي unjust transgression بغير الحق وَأَن تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا and to associate with Allah anybody else in worship a practice that he's never authorized وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and to attribute to Allah that which you don't know to say about Allah that which is not true now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to ask, the Qur'an comes to address the people of Mecca and ask them questions. قُلْ Say, O Muhammad, ask them. مَا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ قُلِ اللَّهِ Who is the Lord of the heavens and the earth? Who created all of this? Say with confidence, O Muhammad, Allah. قُلْ أَفَتَّخَدْتُمْ مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ Have you taken besides Allah? Other deities besides him? La yamlikuna li anfusihim wa la Who cannot even protect or benefit themselves? Qul, say, O Muhammad to them. Hal yastawi al-a'ma wal-basir. Can the blind be equal to the one who can see? The one who is blinded by their own arrogance, blinded by their own possessions, blinded by their wealth from seeing the truth. Can that person be equal to the one who can see, who's liberated, who can perceive, who's got a heart who's not, that's not weighed down by the sins and the desires? Or, أَمْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الظُّلُمَاتُ وَالنُّورُ أَمْ هَلْ تَسْتَوِي الظُّلُمَاتُ وَالنُّورُ And can the darkness and light be equal? The Qur'an comes to ask. أَمْ جَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءِ Or have they associated with Allah partners? خَلَقُوا كَخَلْقِهِ فَتَشَابَهَ الْخَلْقُ عَلَيْهِمْ Is it the case that these other partners supposedly produce creation like Allah, leaving them confused between the two creations? قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ No, 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 no. Allah is the one who created everything. وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَارُ and he is the one who is supreme. So if he is the one who created everything, including you, أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرِ He is the one then that deserves the right to legislate. The one that, he create, the one that created is the one that tells what to do and how it should be done. Nobody else has that right over you. The Qur'an comes to make that point clear. The Qur'an also comes to describe who this Lord is. Who is the Lord that we worship? Tell us more, the Arab said. Tell us more about Allah. Tell us more about this God that you call for. So the ayat in Surah Al-Hashr were revealed. هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك The King. القدوس The Most Holy. السلام The All Perfect. Al-Mu'min, the one who is the source of tranquility. Al-Muhaymin, the one who watches everything. Al-Aziz, the Almighty. Al-Jabbar, the one who is supreme in might. Al-Mutakabbir, the one who is majestic. 
سبحان الله عما يشركون. Glorified is Allah far above any imperfections or anything that they associate with Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals more ayat to describe who it is that they should connect with. Who is this being? How do I know him? Who, who is this being and how should I describe him? I may not be able to conceive him with my sight. I may not be able to imagine him with my being. But I might be able to describe him in some word or in some limited capacity with my speech. The Quran comes to give us more to think about when it comes to Allah. هو الله الخالق البالئ المصور it is Allah, the creator, the inventor, the shaper, the one who gives everything its, its shape. He alone has the most beautiful names. Everything that's in the heavens and the earth recognizes and glorifies him. So humans should do the same. And it is he, the almighty, the all-wise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those who were among the first people to accept Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them in the following ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ As for the foremost, the first of the emigrants, مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ How does Allah describe those who followed from day one of Islam? Who against all odds stood and said, we believe. Allah says, They are pleased with Allah. And Allah is pleased with them. And Allah has prepared for them gardens. تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Gardens under which rivers will flow. And they will stay there. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Stay there forever and ever. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ That is the ultimate triumph. That is the ultimate victory. So these ayat shape what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get us to imagine what Allah says about the earliest Muslims, about the earliest who committed to Islam. And they get us to imagine what was the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Then Jibreel came to the Prophet Muhammad sallam, teaching him how to make wudu and how to pray. And ayat in the Quran were revealed to describe the salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was told, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ And command your family to pray with you. So in Mecca, he would pray with his wife Khadija. She was the first to pray with him. And they would pray too, too. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, وَأَنذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Get up and share this message with your closest relatives. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam gathered his friends, gathered his family first and foremost for a meal in his house. And when they all sat down with him, he began to respectfully address each and every one of them by name after finishing the dinner. And his, O oh, Banu Talib, O oh, Banu Abd Manaf, O oh, Quraysh, and Abu Lahab, Abdul Uzza, his own uncle, got up because he sensed what was to happen, what was coming. He got up and he rudely left. I have no time for this. I know where this is going. I'm out of here. Abu Talib was told by Abu Lahab, you're the one. So imagine the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is told, you're the one that's protecting this man. This man is saying all of these things about our gods, saying all of these things about our community, saying all of this thing about our family. This is what Abu Lahab is saying. The, the Prophet's own uncle is saying this to Abu Talib, the other uncle of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And he's saying, you're the one protecting him. If you were to just leave him, we would be able to basically silence him and put him in his place. But as mentioned, the Arabs protected their, their family. They really protected their family. And basically, if somebody says he's off limits, you were not able to touch that person. So the Prophet Muhammad was protected by Abu Talib. And Abu Talib stood there and he said, let him speak, let him continue. So the Prophet Muhammad invited them to the basics of Islam. And he turned to Fatima radiallahu anha, who was his daughter, to make a point. And he says, O oh, Fatima, wallahi, by Allah, on the day that we stand in front of him, I will not be able to assist you in any way, shape, or form. Then Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib was also present. And Abu Talib came to know that Ali became Muslim. So Abu Talib told Ali, you've become Muslim? Ali says, yes. Abu Talib says, even though Abu Talib is not Muslim, he says, follow what this man, Muhammad, has taught you because he will not mislead nor misguide you. But he himself, Abu Talib, did not become Muslim because he did not want to forego of the legacy 
of his parents. And those around him were pressuring him, don't let go of your way of life, of your tradition, of your legacy, of your heritage, of who you are. It would be a big disgrace to the family. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayat. فَاصْلَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ Proclaim what Allah has commanded. وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And turn away from the polytheists. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ got up on Safa and he gathered the public. Oh people, come. Ya Abin Abd Manaf, Ya Abin Abd He gathered all of the people by name, each tribe by name. And he told them, and we know this, but remind for the reminder benefits the believer. He told him, if I told you there's an enemy behind this mountain of Safa, would you believe me? Yes, O oh Muhammad, we would believe you. We've never heard a lie from you. Abu Lahab interrupted. He said, this is what you've gathered us for? Tabbalaka ya Muhammad. May you perish, O Muhammad. And he left and he says, don't listen to him. He's a madman. Disheartened. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam tried to tell the community a little, bit, a little bit about Islam, but he was not able to deliver completely the message and he was silenced by his own uncle, Abu Lahab. Imagine, he was really, really hurt by that. So he went home to rest and the ayat of the Quran came to reassure him. أَمْ يَقُولُونَ بِهِ جِنَّةِ بَلْ جَاءَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ لِلْحَقِّ كَارِهُونَ Do they claim that he is insane? In fact, he's only come to them with the truth. But most of them dislike the truth. You don't want to hear the truth. So they talked ill about him and they approached the Kaaba. And when he was going around the Kaaba, making dua, doing tawaf around the Kaaba, they choked him while praying in an attempt to kill him. And Abu Bakr came to his aid and saved him. And Abu Bakr had to be taken home to recover from all the beatings that he took to try to protect Rasulullah Upset the Prophet Muhammad again went home and with grief he lay down in his bed, taking shelter from the stress in the arms of his wife. Khadija. Then the ayat were revealed. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. O one who's covered in your clothes, covered by the stress and the anxiety. Qum fa'andir. Get up with might and warn and teach. Wa rabbaka fakabbir. And revere your Lord alone. Don't make magnificent in your eye anybody but your Lord. Wa thiyabaka fatahir. Purify your garments. Present yourself well, market yourself well, be careful of your reputation, make sure that whatever you do from this moment on is a manifestation of what Allah has revealed to you because it's a big responsibility. And continue to shun the idols and shun any wrong, any evil that comes across. Do not count your favors. Do not count the favors that you do for people and do not do anything as a favor for someone expecting anything in return. Do it only for Allah. And be patient for the sake of your Lord. Not for them, but for the sake of your Lord. For when the trumpet will be sounded on the day of resurrection. That is a day that will be difficult, hard. عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ غَيْرُ يَسِيرٌ It will not be easy at all for the disbeliever. The Qur'an continued to reassure the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it came to remind him فَذَكِّرْ فَمَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِكَاهِنٍ وَلَا مَجْنُونَ So continue to remind all, continue to go ahead Oh, all, of, all the people continue to remind them, O oh Muhammad, for by the grace of your Lord, you are not a fortune teller, nor a madman. So imagine the Quran kept coming to reassure him. And SubhanAllah, if you look at the number of ayat in the Quran that reassure the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, there are many. And it goes to show you the amount of hardship and the difficulty he was facing in terms of his mental well-being, his state of loving these people, wanting what's best for them, but they're refusing. And he's stuck between wanting good for them and having to put up with the dirt and the filth and the hatred from them. It's like imagine your mother continues to give out of love for your son or for your daughter, receiving no gratitude, receiving no appreciation, only receiving hardship and terrible words and disgrace and subhanAllah, the worst kind of ingratitude. 
One time, they pushed him to the edge. When he was going around the Kaaba and they said terrible things about him. So the Nabi went to them and he said, I've come to you today with dhabh. You're so terrible in the way that you're dealing with me that you're pushing me to the edge and if I could, I would slaughter you. Imagine the level of pain that he went through. Utba and Al-Walid at that time recognized it. The Prophet Muhammad Sallam is getting agitated. So they thought to diffuse the tension. So they came and they offered, we'll give you wealth, we'll give you power, we'll give you women. If power is what you're looking for, we'll make sure that we never make a decision except after consulting you. And if this thing is out of your control, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling that this is something coming outside of you and you want it to stop, we'll give you the best healer. And Nabi Sallallahu looked at Abu Al-Walid and he told him, Are you done, O Abu Al-Walid? And then he recited from the Quran. Hameen Tanzeelun minar Rahman rahim This is a revelation from the most compassionate, the most merciful. Kitabun fussilat ayatuh This is a book whose details and whose verses are perfectly explained. The Quran will come to explain bit by bit. It is a clear, tranquil, very eloquent Quran in the language that you speak for people who know. Delivering good news and warning. Yet most of them turn away and they refuse to hear. They say our hearts are veiled against what you're calling us to. Our hearts are veiled against what you're saying. We don't want anything to do with it. And there's deafness in our hearts. We've plugged our ears. We don't want to listen to. And there's a barrier between you and us. Do whatever you want and we shall stay and do what we know to be good and to be true. Tell them, I'm just a man like you. The only difference is that I'm receiving revelation which I'm delivering to you. فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ So hold on and be disciplined with him. وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ And ask him for forgiveness. وَوَيْلُ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ And what a warning and woe is coming from Allah to the polytheists. And the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ continued to, to recite from Surah Fussilat until he reached the ayah, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً If you turn away, then I'm coming to you, warning you with a blast like the one that hit Aad and Thamud. At this time, those who came to negotiate with him, including Utbah and including others as well, Utbah said, stop, stop, enough, enough, enough. Because he didn't want to hear any more, especially about the warning and the punishment, fearing that it could be true. When Utbah came out after listening to the Quran, they looked at him and they said, Muhammad has placed a spell on Utbah, which shows you that they were so touched by the Quran and affected, especially Utbah, that when he came out, he really thought this could be real. Ramadan Mubarak to you and your family. See you next time.